Welcome to episode 44 of the We Are Auto Show, rounding out 2021. How are you, Derek? I'm doing fantastic, buddy. We have a very interesting episode today where we'll talk about some of the best and worst cars of 2021. We do. It's going to be a good one. It it's should be. be a good one. Um, but I've got some worst cars to stock, talk about first. Okay, let's do it. So, funny story. I've been out and about on the roads a lot, and there is a common theme that I'm seeing a lot lately. Uh, a common theme. Mm-hmm. Uh, aggressive BMW drivers. This is true, but not that one. That's mm. my fact. Uh, it is currently December 20-something, mm-hmm. or the end of December, which means all of the not young people have flocked <laughs> to Florida. They are also known as snowbirds. Yes. You know of them. Those of you that live in Florida know very well what I'm talking about. Uh, those of you who are not living in Florida may not know what I'm talking about. But there are these typically retired people that come and flock down to Florida uh, every winter to escape the cold climate months up in, you know, the places like New York and Michigan, Ohio and all that. And they bring down their cars with them. You know what I'm finding is such a common snowbird car? Um, Cadillacs. Yeah, but Buicks. Yeah, that that's more like mm, trailer park snowbirds okay so the snowbird car that i'm seeing a lot of are beige lexuses <laughs> like an so, rx something yes. Yes. Are, speaking of like I, I you know exactly the beige lexus <laughs> yes. i'm talking about the, the either the beige lexus suv rx or the beige lexus sedan whatever the ls or whatever it mm-hmm. is i saw and i counted 22 of them in a 90 minute 22 22 of them in a 90 minute trip it was an hour and a half long and i counted 22 beige lexuses that's a lot of beige and that's not counting the silver lexuses or the powder blue lexuses these are just simply the beige (laughs) ones only beige lexuses 22 of them in 90 minutes that must be a new record dude that's a lot of beige lexuses (laughs) they are prevalent around here though they are very prevalent and they they just like every corner we turn it was like a beige lexus oh my and another and another beige Lexus. Where they're multiplying. The beige Lexuses are rampant. So if you're a Lexus salesman, do you think that you stockpile the beige Lexuses for the winter? <laughs> At least here, I, yes, like a squirrel <laughs> hiding nuts. Yes, you, you've got to just hide all of your beige Lexuses in the back corner of the lot, so that when all the little old ladies come down, they can get the the beige Lexus. Yeah, or the powder blue one. Yeah, you know which powder blue I'm talking about too, don't oh, you? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That old lady blue. Mm-hmm. Yes. Mm-hmm. So that's what I've saw. My record of 22 beige Lexuses in 90 minutes. That is a whole lot of beige Lexuses. That's pretty cool, though. It it is. It is. That's funny. <laughs> so there is a there's actually not a ton of news to talk about today, um, but there is some that we should chat about. We did have trouble finding news, which was actually pretty funny. Because we're in that weird time between Christmas and the New Year's where nobody really comes out with anything. <laughs> and no one really knows what day it is. No. I'm like, not even working right now. I haven't shaved in like a week. It's been great. <laughs> You're going all mountain man, honestly? Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. It, yeah. No one knows what day it is, kind of where you are in the world. Everyone's just confused and just like full of sugar. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> uh, did you see that Mercedes and Tesla have taken away the ability to play video games while driving? Um, hmm. <laughs> so why was that even a thing in the first place, frankly? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know, honestly. I mean, good. It, you shouldn't be playing video games while driving. That seems a little bit, mm, maybe not so smart, I guess. And No. Yeah. No. Distracted driving is a terrible thing. Everybody knows that. And like texting and driving is bad enough but i didn't know that you could i knew you could play games in a tesla i've done it while sitting still but i thought that you had to be sitting still i didn't know you could be driving and still play games i think i i do know that like tesla allowed you to you do like passenger play i don't know if that's what yeah. the name of it's called but how do you regulate that it's a passenger that's playing it i don't know you like, can't I, I don't think you can and i'm sure that there are people that are doing it now here's the interesting thing about this is when we move into the new world that becomes full self-driving in however many years that takes eventually it will happen i don't know how long it will be a million do you think that this will be reverted back and will go back to a time where now you can play games because if the car was driving me and i'm a normal person who's not in 
enthusiastic about cars, right? I'm my parents or something like that. I wouldn't just want to sit there and watch things. I would want to play on my phone, read a book, play some games, do something. So do you think that they'll reinstate this, that you can now do it when the car is driving you? I think what's going to happen is we're going to be like Alien vs. Predator style going into these like transport pods where you're getting <laughs> energy or something. I don't know. <laughs> what the <laughs> <laughs> You are not ready for the day where a car drives you around. Not even remotely close. I don't want to sit back with some wine and cheese and I'd be sipping a nice, you know, Cabernet Sauvignon while I'm being ferried from place to place. If I do that, yeah, I'd rather just have, I don't know, a chauffeur in the back of a Rolls Royce, please. Because mm. that I could get behind. I get behind that. Like, I'll chill some champagne in the champagne chiller in the back of my rolls. I'll have that nice extra plush carpet, and I'll just be feeding my wife strawberries. Like that. That'd be you, great. You keep dreaming, buddy. You keep dreaming. <laughs> I think that's just that. That would be the best kind of self driving that I could imagine. Okay, so back to the question, though. Do you actually think this will get reverted in however many years? You know, I, I would assume it, it has to. Be. I think it could. Unfortunately, I think it could. But yeah. then we're still. Not attentive, and I know the car is supposed to be driving us, but that means that there's no non-self-driving cars. Like, literally, driver cars are gone completely. Yeah, I think X number of years is, like, a lot of years. Like, we're talking, like, Star Wars-style years away. Uh, I'd say, like, 50 is my guess. But then you're still going to have cars from this era that are on the roads being driven as collectors or whatever the case it is i think we're a solid hundred years before we're at the point where there's a hundred yeah where there's zero no. driven cars on the road no i don't think zero the case. zero zero not a single one right i i see what you're saying but i think that once some car once a handful of car companies nail self-driving which is going to take a while but at that point then you start like a 25 year clock that says it started at 25 years from now. Regulation says cars must be self-driving and we're going to stop having people run into each other. Like the regulation is going to push it. And it'll, it'll be up to regulators to determine when that clock starts and ends. I don't want a regulator to tell me when I can stop driving. Yeah, I know. There will be like autocrosses and racetracks where you'll still drive the car. But the average every day I go to grocery store and back probably will change but i don't know the, the question is how long do we get until that clock starts and how long will that clock be and those are the really hard things to determine right now but i wouldn't be surprised if it was I, like 10 years from now we get self-driving like nailed down to a point where it's a, it's it's already technically safer than people but like really really safe where it's not going to have incidents if it I was still just i still just don't think i trust it i don't trust it that's fine, but people didn't trust someone not operating an elevator. And like, hello, when was the last time you saw someone operating an elevator? Yeah, but this is different, though. Is it? You can fall down a 90-foot shaft and into your death, or you could yeah. be going 70 miles an hour on the interstate. And yeah, because you're in a confined space versus in a car, you have free range of the world. Is a car not a confined space? Well, the interior of the car is, but mm -hmm. the elevator shaft only goes up and down. It doesn't go left, right, forwards, backwards, all the different directions. Right. Normally. <laughs> that would be a really <laughs> weird elevator shaft if you've got an elevator shaft going diagonally up and then a bank, hard bank left. There is a NASCAR I, I, elevator shaft. No, I know of one that goes up sideways and back down across a road. It's somewhere in the UK, and I've seen a video of it. It's an elevator and it doesn't like get you up and then drop you off and then you're walking through. Nope. Things. Nope. It goes par it's actually a handicap elevator for people who need to get across the street and they only have stairs to do it. So it takes them up, it goes sideways and then it brings them back down and it lets them out on the other side of the street. It's possible. It's just <laughs> never really used. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> you're you're derailing my point there. <laughs> but you get I I get what you're saying. Um I think you get what I'm saying as well. I just I don't do. I don't think I'll ever get to the point where I trust a self-driving car enough for it to just ferry me from place to place to place to place to place to place. You old man, you. That's just mm. fine, though. 
Yeah. I am very much an old man and mm-hmm. I'm perfectly mm-hmm. fine with that. I'm, I will soon evolve into my beige Lexus driving self. <laughs> <laughs> very true. <laughs> Very the true. dream car of every retired person, a beige <laughs> Lexus. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah yeah. And then yeah. my wife will get a baby blue powder blue Lexus. Okay, if you say so. And you're gonna feed her strawberries in the back of it, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. I'll sipping champagne. All right, we shall move on because this is getting <laughs> off topic quickly. Yes. Let's change gears here, shall we? Yes. So, did you see <clears throat> the news now that BMW has released a teaser of their LMDH car? I wish I didn't. Mm. because you know it's funny uh a few months ago someone released like a render of what the bmw lmdh car could yes. look like and we had briefly chatted about that and we thought please dear god don't make it actually look like that <laughs> and oh my dear god they're actually making it look like that uh yeah, it's it's big it's mm. it's big and snouty that is not good no that is not. just who can who can genuinely look at that and think, you know, this looks good. I like the look of this. This magnificence of the snout that we have here. I just I am really not a fan of the look of this big snouty looking half a lump of a weird strange nose thing. I think only BMW people can think of that. I don't know maybe one designer at BMW. I don't know. I don't know. Like are the BMW, are the designers at BMW are they legally blind? Like, yes. I genuinely think they may legally be blind. Yeah. They're designing this car by feel. They're feeling, okay, here's the grill. It needs to continue all the way to, like, here. <laughs> it's It's got the big snout. It's pretty ugly. But I want to, like, crawl up one of them and see what I can find. Yeah. It looks like a cave, doesn't it? Yeah. Like, you could just, like, go spelunking, right? Because right. that's cave diving. Yeah. You can go cave diving in the snout of the... Yeah, you totally could. They did release a couple numbers, though. So, the combustion engine... Good start to this sentence. Yes. Uh, will deliver a minimum of 630 horsepower, while the Bosch-supplied hybrid setup will be capped at around 67 horsepower, and it will combine in total to deliver at around 670 horsepower. So... Good numbers. Well, not too bad. Okay. Yeah, good numbers. Um, they are going to have... Uh, where is it? Do, do, do. They're going to have a, a cost cap for the car. And it will be around a million euros, but that does exclude the engine. Oof. But I am glad to see that there is a cost cap in place because we know that in racing, especially in manufacturer racing, Mm -hmm. where money doesn't really seem to be an issue. I wonder what series that might be referring to. (laughs) (laughs) I just wonder who, what series Uh, where there's not a... Uh, an issue where some manufacturers just dump unlimited money. Mm, there's one. Yeah, there's it one. starts with an F and it ends with a one. Yeah, it does. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. I agree with you. I'm happy that there's that million, million was it pound or yeah, euro, million, million, million euro. euro cost cap, whatever right. it is. The million euro cost cap on the... Uh, everything the, but the engine. Yeah, on everything but the engine, because that means that you should still have a little bit of fair play, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, and then now the only thing we're worried about is the engine. Right, but the, so there is a push and pull there because I do want to see the manufacturers be able to innovate on the cars because that's mm-hmm. what racing is supposed to be, an innovation lab for the road car. Yeah. These cars are far from the road car. I will say that. Oh, yeah. You're not, not much comes over the road car. In their GT3 series, okay, a lot of stuff pertains to the road car. Mm-hmm. In their prototype series, not much does, but at least they can tinker in the engine. But I still imagine that not much of the engine is still going to get moved over to the road car because... They're running at crazy boost pressures. They're running at crazy tolerances. It's just maybe some, maybe a little bit of design stuff comes over to the road car, but pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. You're splitting hairs there. Yeah. Pretty well. Yeah. So we'll see. Hopefully this teaser, this was just a teaser, by the way. Hopefully this teaser is not what comes to reality because it's pretty ugly. Have you seen the road cars? <laughs> It's what's yes, coming to reality. I have seen. Can we be honest? Cars. Do you honestly think it's not going to look like this? I. I this <laughs> is the official BMW blog that teased this. So yes, it's going to look like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. Yeah. Oh yes. They are. They are going to just keep doing what BMW is doing. Mm-hmm. And for mm-hmm. the people listening on the podcast, just Google whenever you can. BMW LMDH, and you'll see big snout nose. Yeah, uh, 
the, one of the biggest ones mm-hmm. in the known okay, world. So the first oh, to unlock oh. oh, yeah. You just asked Google. I did. Yeah. Google will okay. answer, answer you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever say the words, hey, S-I-R-I. Yes. Because no, everyone's let's... iPhone will be blowing up. Let's pass on that one. <laughs> so let's move on to something a little more fun, shall mm-hmm. we? Mm-hmm. We're going to do a little bit of a 2021 recap here with our favorite cars in a number of different categories that have come out over either been released or announced or just some cars that we may have chatted about, stuff that we've looked at over 2021 that we are just a big fan of and our favorite cars. Sound good? Let's do it. All right. So let's start with SUV. So essentially the mommy missile, the school run, the off-road, the whatever you want to call it, the SUV, do everything, potentially two or three rows of seats Mm -hmm. and fit a bunch of stuff in. What's your favorite SUV of 2021? The sport utility vehicle for 2021. Correct. My winner, and we each have a winner in each of these categories. Yes. Um, my winner is going to be the Ford Mustang Mach-E. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, that's awful. Why do you say that's awful? Have you seen it? Yeah, I, I think it looks okay. It doesn't look fantastic. It looks okay. I think it looks ugly. But what it does do is push the EV space forward, and I'm about it, dude think that's cool that they made that it's the first one that i've seen get other than maybe the id4 and and the teslas the model x's the model y's get pretty mainstream pretty quickly only because you see them ford, around town only because ford has good salesmen and they slap the mustang badge on it right they're very good at marketing they're very good at pushing their brand forward which is fine mm-hmm. like that's a valid strategy to be a car manufacturer this is true we know they're not the best quality cars mm-hmm. uh but I am happy to see that this car came out and has been somewhat well received in the EV community as well. It has been has it been well received in the EV community? It's been solidly received. Okay. Do you have reason to believe different? I don't know because I have z- <laughs> literally zero knowledge of the EV community whatsoever. Yeah. My entire knowledge of the EV community is just you. Okay. <laughs> so the EV community is a little weird though. There's like the Tesla guys, and they are a diehard Tesla. Nothing. It's I don't know how to explain it in any other terms. Tesla or die. Yeah, it's Tesla or die. Um, but I don't. Is there an, an internal combustion manufacturer that's like that? Like, is there a manufacturer that's like, it's I'm, this or nothing? I'm not going to say there's a manufacturer like that, but there's like truck people in general. Okay. Are like, I'm a Ford truck guy or I'm a Chevy truck right, guy. Right, right. I'm not a Ford and Chevy truck right. guy. And if you have a Chevy, you can get the hell out of my house. Yes. The Tesla guys are like 10 times worse than that. Oof. They're just Tesla. Yikes. And it's either that or nothing else. I don't really want to be friends with them. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I don't really care for that either. That's kind of lame. Um, but as far as the EV space goes, this one, other than that group of people, which you'll never make happy unless you're Elon Musk, uh, the, that group of people didn't really like it. Everyone else seemed to think it was solid. It wasn't the best. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't the best thing ever. It wasn't the worst thing ever. So there are EV people solid. that are non-Tesla people. Yeah. Yeah. There's a whole community out there that is definitely like they have ID4s or they have they had volts and they're like, those were terrible. But yeah, <laughs> none of that sounds good to me at all. I, I don't want to go to a dinner party with any of these people, <laughs> frankly. Like, could you imagine the conversation at a dinner party? <laughs> How many miles of range did you get in your EV today in your ID4? I got 42 miles more than you in my Chevy Volt. Yes. <laughs> go, guys. Yeah. You know that's what the conversations are. Uh, I'm sure, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> yes. That's fine, though. There, there are people out there that are like that. That's no problem. With the adenoids and everything. Yes. <laughs> and their wife has the beige Lexus. That's fine. <laughs> that's just fine. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, so back to the Mustang Mach-E, though. has uh, 270 to 300 miles on the range. Okay. Solid. Like we said. 273. It, the, I think that's... you at least got to hit, like... Plus 250 or else you're in big trouble. Yeah, um, or else it's not even a car. Yeah, yeah. It's just a golf cart. And then I think like 300 to 400 is around the magic number at the moment. If you hit 500, you're, you're God tier at the moment. You are a God. Yeah. Yes. But nobody's really there yet. Good. Um, And <laughs> it does have 4,300 pounds as the curb weight. It's, it's a little hefty. It that's go, actually a lot lighter than I expected. It is. I'm going to be honest. That's a lot lighter than I right. expected because I know a battery weighs 10 tons. A battery does weigh 10 tons. It does. <laughs> There's a lot of lithium and cobalt and all that stuff in there. There um, is. And an MSRP of 43000 starting. Which is 
SUV territory. It That's is just a, kind it, of what you expect SUV for an SUV. An SUV is just 50 grand. It's not cheap SUV territory, but it's reasonable. No. If you're looking at an SUV nowadays for creature comforts, you're 50,000 bucks. Right. Yeah. So I'm a fan of this Mustang Mach-E, and I've seen a lot of them around town. Okay. Do you have a pick for an SUV? I do. A sport utility vehicle. It is a sport utility vehicle. Okay. All right. My pick of the, my favorite sport utility vehicle of 2021 is the Ford Bronco. The Ford, is that an SUV? It definitely is. Wait. Is it not an SUV? Mm, That should be in the category of off-road utility vehicle. So uh, going off-road is a sport. Mm, Maybe. Yeah, it's a sport, and it is utility. It's in the category of and it is a vehicle. Jeep competitor. <laughs> it's a sport <laughs> utility vehicle. It is a vehicle. It's, it can it, be it's utilized utility. for utility uh, in a sporting manner. Yes, it is a sport is utility. Is it really a mommy missile, though? Uh, yes. Really? Spe- that's a really cool spec, the one we're looking at right now, too. Oh, I like that a lot. <laughs> I like that a lot. I've been seeing it around town, and I really like the new Bronco. Oh, yeah, I've seen it around town, and they're awesome. I'm a big fan. No doubt. They're awesome. Like, so a couple of reasons why I like the new Bronco for my SUV of the year. Mm-hmm. Because one of the few SUVs that you can get is a two-door. Okay. And I think that's just cool. Like, mm-hmm. that's just a cool thing. Plus, not only can you get it two-door, you can get it in a two-door with a manual. Yeah, you can't So you can get that. that as, like, the OG cool spec of the right. century. A two-door SUV with a manual transmission. That's freaking cool. You can't go wrong with that. That's just really freaking cool. So a couple little specs from it here. Uh, starting price with your base, 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 base model for Bronco, you're 29 grand and change. Is this a Bronco or a Sport? Bron- proper Bronco. Okay. So you can actually get a proper Bronco, 29 grand. I didn't know that. Now, you wouldn't want to. Okay. Because you would get literally f- uh, four wheels, a steering wheel, and a seat. <laughs> <laughs> But you could, yes. Okay. Um, the your towing capacity is up to about thirty five hundred pounds, so you're not using it to tow a lot, but you can tow a small boat. Thirty five hundred. Yep. Hmm. Uh, you're not getting very good MPG. No. So your miles per gallon is like twenty to twenty two ish, um, and then it comes with either a two point three liter four banger. It comes with a four banger. Or a two point seven liter V six. Hmm. So, honestly. I would kind of spec this as like a base model god here. I would go pretty well base two door manual transmission with a tiny little four cylinder. Really? I kind of would because it to me reminds me very much of like the original Toyota Land Cruiser. Because mm. it's cheap. Yeah. It's going to be like rough and tumble. Yeah. It's a tiny little engine, so you can't really kill it. I kind of like that idea. And you can't really dispute it either, can you? I can. Because you would be the one to get in that, to put your foot flat to the floor, and be like, ooh, I messed up. (laughs) You're probably right. (laughs) Yes. But I do like that idea. But that's my pick. My favorite SUV of 2021 is the Ford Bronco. For the fact that you can get it two-door, and it looks cool as hell, and it's just cool. Yeah, no, it's a really cool car. I think that that's a solid pick. Um, it is funny enough that for the two SUVs that we have chosen, <laughs> I just noticed what you're both. <laughs> yeah, I just realized what we both picked for our SUVs are both Fords. Wow. Yikes. Okay. I guess that's just how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, can I give you my non Ford pick for my second option here? Uh huh. You can. So we're going to go away from the SUVs. Okay. No more sport utility vehicles. Now we're going to talk about a truck. A good old truck. Normally, I'm a Ford truck guy or Toyota. Those are my two kind of favorite manufacturers for for, for trucks in general. But my favorite truck of 2021 is neither of those. And it's because it's just insane. It is the Dodge Ram TRX. The T-Rex for short. Because they named it the T-Rex because the T-Rex can actually kill a Raptor. Of course they did. Of course they did. So you went from Ford to Dodge. (laughs) <laughs> yes, because in your TRX, you have a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 that develops 702 horsepower. 700 horsepower in a truck. And it's got crazy off-road suspension that you can fly like an eagle, right? Yes, you can. And it's just incredible. I just love it so much. Yeah, I, I can't disagree with you on this. It's, it does 0 to 60 in, I think, sub 4 seconds. The, the only problem is the price, right? Well, yeah, it's like 75 grand. Ooh. It's truck. 
But you know what? If you're buying a Raptor nowadays, you're spending close to that anyway. By the time you spec everything up. But what are the power? What are the power numbers on the Raptor? Like you're not a Raptor is 450. Nearly, yeah, you're not getting nearly the power. Yeah. So if you're going to spend close to 70 grand on a truck, buy this. Yeah, no. It's, buy a TRX. That's definitely a no-brainer. Because it's so cool. Yeah. And you can just... I think I saw that it gets eight miles per gallon. Eight? Maybe ten. Eight? Ten to eight. If eight? You're eight to ten. Yeah, if, if, if you're lucky. If you... Well, let me put it this way. If you are a car enthusiast, you will get eight. If you are not a car enthusiast, you might get 10 to 12. <laughs> because how can you not want to just listen to a 6.2 liter supercharged V8 scream every single time you leave a green light? Ever. <laughs> every sing- everywhere I would go, I'd put my foot flat to the floor on that thing. Because it does zero to 60 in a 6,400 pound truck in like sub four seconds. I, yeah. That's stupid fast. That, that's Even dumb not, numbers. That's not stupid fast for a truck. That's stupid fast full stop. Oh, yeah. yeah. You, you could race this light to light, which is kind of funny. You could race this off-road in the dunes, <laughs> in the whoops, <laughs> like the picture that we saw on YouTube. And for uh, those listening on Apple, you are missing a really cool picture of a Dodge Ram TRX flying through the sky. Yeah, like off all four wheels off the ground flying. And, and with like some good air time, hang time too. Mm-hmm. Like not just like a little jump, but nope. like... We're talking, yeah, I want to do that. I, that is right up your alley. Does that not look like fun? That is right up your alley. That looks like the best way to have a Friday night ever. <laughs> and you can guarantee the driver initially just said, hold my beer, watch this. <laughs> That's the last thing that came out of his mouth before he jumped this TRX over yes. maybe a baby raptor somewhere on, hidden under there. Oh, I see what you did there. I see what you did there. Uh-huh. All right, let me, let me bring you back down to earth with, okay. uh, with my truck. Okay. So I have chosen uh, the brand new, which they have produced, I believe, a total of 150-ish of these, Rivian R1T. So your first pick was an EV, Mm -hmm. and your second pick is an EV. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Do you have a personality? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes, I do. (laughs) So the Rivian R1T is actually a very cool truck. I know that you think this is somewhat of a cool truck. You're not? I did. Really stoked on it. I did, but I'm going to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. The more I see them, the more I don't like them. Why? The look is not growing on me. It's detracting from me. Mm. Like the look of it, initially, I was like, oh, it kind of looks like a truck. It's kind of cool. And right. the more I look at it, the more I'm like, I'm just not quite as stoked about it as I used to be. It just looks kind of blah. It looks... Not particularly attractive, in my opinion. Mm. Well, the Rivian R1T did get released, technically, but I think that they only released 150 of them, and from what I can tell, those were either like press cars or like first employees. I don't really think that anybody who legitimately ordered one online has gotten them yet, which is kind of lame. I um, don't know. I would not know. From what I've heard, <laughs> also Rivian is instead working on like Amazon's vans instead of this truck at the moment because... Amazon owns them. Do, are they owned by Amazon? Yeah, they're owned by Amazon. I actually didn't know that. Yeah. So Bezos owns them. Yeah, Bezos owns them. Yeah. He Why also, didn't he shape them like a penis, though? He, <laughs> he also actually, was, that could be where they draw the design cues for the headlights. <laughs> so, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think they did. But uh, the Rivian R1T <laughs> base price, 74000 that's so what for you're, the same that's of, the up. <laughs> so for the same amount of money, you could have a Dodge Ram TRX and go fly through the sky. Yes. With seven hundred horsepower. Yes. And make a bunch of hippies mad. Mm-hmm. Or you could get this penis headlights with a a, a, a truck bed thing on it. All right. So it will get you four hundred ish miles of range. If yeah. you spec it you know out to what? that. Hold on a second. I bet you that's actually probably more range than you get in the Dodge. Yeah, yes. 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 It probably with your eight MPG. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's zero to six what was the zero to sixty time on your Dodge? I don't know the exact, but it's like I think I believe it's sub four seconds. Ooh, okay. Three seconds. Three point two to three flat, depending on the spec you get for the R one T. So yeah, they're both fast yes i bet this probably would beat the r1t in a drag or the r1t would probably beat the dodge in a drag race my guess because it's an ev and that's the party trick that they do it would be close it would be that's gonna run out of top end speed 
for sure. Dodge it, Ram will keep. It's got a supercharger, dude. The the top speed of the R1D 125 miles an hour. Oh, the, the, I think the top speed of the Dodge <laughs> Ram is Mach two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're probably right. Um, but you do end up getting, I believe that it was 600 or 700 horsepower. Well, yeah, we talked about that. So it's close. Which is around the same. Um, and it is around the same price. It, I think it looks good. Um, they are going to have the party trick where you can do the independent wheel steering and you can do tank you turn. Can, like crab. Yeah, you can do crabbing. You can do the tank turning thing. It's kind of cool. They also have the gear tunnel, which I think is really cool in the, the R1. The gear seat. tunnel? Yeah, so underneath, you know, normally where the transmission would be, mm-hmm. underneath the seats, they actually put a whole tunnel that you could go across the truck. So right, uh, in, right behind the last person's seat they have a tunnel but through the whole truck yeah it's actually really cool why uh just so you can fit stuff in there (laughs) yeah uh in they actually give you a a whole entire sink like kitchen setup that you can fit in there and it fits in the exact orientation they're supposed to be all for camping right they're supposed to be for the off-roading camping kind of stuff Uh, it's that's just kind of weird it is, but I also think it's really cool. Like, the gear tunnel idea is pretty neat. It is pretty neat. I'm seeing on your screen. It's it's it, right. it's it's extra storage. But I'll be honest with you, Dodge has that kind of stuff in their bedsides with their Ram boxes, what they call it, which yeah, is where you can bed. actually most trucks you can't open the bedside, but you can actually stuff things all the way down the entire bedside of the of most Dodges. Okay. Yeah, it, it's kind of the same. Yeah. type of concept same it's idea just more storage but yeah. it's in like such a weird spot that you could never really do in a normal car yeah right? i see what you're talking about yeah it the is transmission's there the i don't know it's just it's a weird spot but yeah. if you were like a golfer fantastic <laughs> right i don't know what's wrong with the bed i i i see what you're saying i see what you're saying that's for you know for beer no rocks you know what the, what kind of okay <laughs> what kind of beer does the rivian owner drink uh very expensive beer <laughs> like the beer with like tweed in it yeah very and expensive beer like quadruple hopped and the very hipstery beer right and i'm guessing the dodge just drinks a bud light well i was gonna say what is the dodge ram trx mm-hmm. drink? the dodge ram trx drinks four cases of bush light on a friday exactly. night exactly and who would you rather have at a party the four cases the of bush Dodge. light every yes. single time. Yes. Doesn't that just sound like fun? Yes. Okay, I, I agree with you in this. <laughs> but I think that this is a cool truck. I just wish that Amazon would they would actually start producing them because that would be nice. Because <laughs> I don't think they're actually producing them at the moment. But it is doing unique things in the EV space and it's pushing the EV space forward. Interesting. So that brings us up to our next category, which is okay. the best daily car. Do you All have right. a best daily? I did come to a pick of a best daily. Okay. So now I'm a little biased here. We, we <laughs> shut. <laughs> okay. I'm a lot biased here. <laughs> That's but better. my pick for the best daily is the new Mark 8. So I guess it's technically the model year of 2022, but I've seen them around already. Okay. So the Mark 8 Volkswagen GTI. Okay. You really Why? can't dispute that. It's hard to dispute the fact that a GTI is a hot hatch that is a great daily. It's comfortable. It's sporty. It does everything you want it to do. It comes in a manual transmission. It looks pretty good. It's got cool ass looking fog lights in the grill too. Wow. I know. Big wow. Right. <laughs> but I, you, you kind of can't really argue a GTI is a perfect daily. I'm not going to argue it's a bad daily. Is it the perfect daily? Well, for someone that isn't like the Sultan of Brunei and isn't going to daily a Lamborghini Aventador. Yes. Okay. I think it is the perfect daily because, honestly, it's a great-looking little car. Mm -hmm. It's got a big boot, right? It's got a big trunk. It's a hatchback, so you can fit a ton of stuff in it, right? You can fit the the kid's bike in there. You can fit the skateboard. You can fit the hockey gear. You can fit the, you know, the the chainsaw that you just bought from Lowe's because you got to go chop down a tree, whatever the hell the thing is, right? (laughs) Is that really what Golf GTI owners are doing? Actually, they're putting everything in their trunk, yes. Like, genuinely every single thing, yes. Okay. I'm just saying. Um, Now, you're looking for the new Mark A GTI. You're looking somewhere in the upper 30 grand range, so 35 to 40 grand, 38-ish. Yeah. 
Uh, it's reasonable, although it's still too pricey for what I think a GTI should be, frankly. GTI should be 31. 31, okay. But okay. I, that I digress. That's just the price of new cars nowadays, and yes. I just... I'll just get angry. Um, either way, uh, I do like the fact that it is uh, front engine, front wheel drive. You can get it four doors, and I believe you can also get it two doors. Um, but you've got a manual transmission option as well. Uh, you do get the same turbocharged four-cylinder, I believe a two-liter turbo, that okay. is good for 241 horsepower and 273 torques. So it's not the craziest. It's not the least crazy. It's just a good all-around daily. Yeah, this is a daily driver category. It's supposed to be a good all-around daily. I will say that there is a big community behind this car, too. Yeah. A big community that's really into making these unique. I, I, I would consider myself a part of that community. I would, too. I would, too. I There's a lot of aftermarket support for it. You get a head nod from other GTI enthusiasts, mm-hmm. like the Jeep Wave, right? Mm-hmm. Which, you know, is what it is, I suppose. It is. But uh, honestly... It's, in my opinion, again, it's the perfect daily. I love Volkswagen GTIs. I always have since I was a kid. Since my dad had a 20th anniversary Mark IV GTI. And I've been in love with him since. And it's just the perfect daily. It just is. I'll give you a solid pick, but I think I have you beat. You don't have me beat. Okay. Okay. Let me pose to you the perfect daily, the 2022 Honda Civic. <laughs> <laughs> That's just a standard yes is all that is. It's it is just the daily. Yeah. It is just Yeah. Is it I, boring? Yes. Relatively. Yes. No, yes, it definitely is boring. Yes. yes. It's it boring. It is boring. It is but Civic. Like nothing can go wrong. It's just You're, a Honda Civic. You are right about that. It is literally just a Honda it is time tested. It is tried and true. Would you like to learn how to drive? Here's a Honda Civic. Are you a veteran race car driver? Here's a Honda Civic. No problem. Doesn't matter. You're, you can't really dispute that. No. That like, what, okay, the category of daily drivers, Honda Civic is the category of daily drivers. (laughs) Like, that is just what a daily driver is. You Google daily driver and you will get Honda Civic. Mm -hmm. Like, let me give you some numbers on a Honda Civic, okay? They're really just eye shattering. Are they? Eye pop, unbelievable. Are they? Starting at twenty one thousand nine hundred dollars, that is cheap, dude. Twenty one thousand for a new car. I that mean, is, you don't want that car. It is pretty cheap. You don't want a twenty one thousand. You don't want a twenty one thousand dollar Honda Civic. You do not want a base. Anyway, you get one hundred and fifty eight to one hundred eighty horsepower. Yeah, it ain't gonna go anywhere fast. No, but it's not meant to. That's no. fine. You'll get thirty three mpg in that city and forty two in the highway. Forty two, solid. Can't go wrong with it. With a 1.5 liter four cylinder, obviously it's a four cylinder. You can get up to a two liter four cylinder, which is, I think, what you should get in that spec of Honda. I think so. Uh, and I had a 1.8 liter Honda Civic back in the and day. It was, and it was slow as door. balls. Oh, it was so slow. But it was, it was so fun thing to ever. drive, dude. It, it I'm gonna, didn't matter. I'm going to chirp at you about the uh, MPG. Okay. The GTI I was talking about, mm-hmm. it is. Uh, it says the EPA is 32 on highway. 32 on highway? Yes. Wait. 32 you... highway miles per gallon in the Mark 8 GTI. The Honda Civic's 42. Yes, I know. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> How did Volkswagen get so little MPG on it? Dieselgate. Okay, yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right. And the curb weight of the Civic comes in between 2.8 to 3,000 pounds, which is, you know, it, it is what it is. Yeah. It's not going to be fast. It's not going to be sexy, but it will damn well get you around town and it won't break down on you. Guaranteed. It's a good car. It is yep. just a good car. Yep. That's all it is. It's just a good car. That's my pick. All right. Uh, it, it is an acceptable pick. It is a correct pick. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say it's a good or a bad pick. It is a correct pick. The answer was correct on the test. Yes, this is true. (laughs) True or false? Civic. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. All right, so shall we move on to arguably our favorite category? We should. Favorite sports car of 2021. I suspect some more bias in this category. No. I suspect it. You can suspect all you want. Let me start with you. What is your 
What is your pick for your favorite sports car that was announced or we talked about or launched or came out in 2021? Okay, so you, I know, are going to pick a brand that starts with a P and it's in Germany. Yes. So yes. I <laughs> ended up, I'm kind of the curveball here. You right? are, yeah. And you don't know what I'm going to choose. It could be an EV. It could be. It better not be an EV. You're it, not going EV straight down the board here. I mean. I did, with the exception no, of a Civic. Civic. Yeah. Well, Okay, I'm not going. You cannot let the Civic be your only (laughs) internal combustion engine in this entire list. I am going Lotus. Ooh, a Lotus. Yes. The I like your pick already. The Amira, I believe, Mm -hmm. is how you say Mm -hmm. it. Correct. I believe Amira or Amira, maybe. I'm not sure. I don't even know. But anyway, it was the new Lotus that came out, uh, and I believe this is the Lotus that is also killing off the Exige, the Elise, and there's another one. Is it the Evora? The Evora. Yes. And this, from what I can tell and from what we can tell, is probably the swan song of Lotus's internal combustion engine. Most likely, yes. But it looks fantastic. It looks brilliant. And... It's a stunner. Yeah. It's quick, but not like, I'm going to kill you fast. Yeah, it's not mind-blowingly quick. It, no. What it is, is it's a sports car. Mm-hmm. It, we, sports cars are not hypercars or supercars. No. It is a sports car. Yes. It, it reminds me of like the BRZ of the sports car, right? It kind of has a little bit of that same equivalent of like, it's definitely not the fastest in the no, category, no. but it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun to drive. Yes. Yes. And I really want to get my paws on one and I really, 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 really want to drive one when they do come out. Mm-hmm. So if any of our viewers or listeners or audience has any ties to Lotus and would let some silly little uh, <laughs> podcast hosts drive in Myra. Please let us know. That'd be awesome. So it does come with a V8 that is supercharged. It's 3.5 liters. It will give you 400 horsepower. What, look at that. It's not a, dumb fast. A V8? No, a V6. Oh, okay. Did I say V8? Yeah, you said V8. Sorry, V6. Okay. <laughs> V6 that's supercharged, 3.5 liter, 400 horsepower. Oh, is that the same one that's out of the Toyota? I think it is. It probably is. I think it's the same uh, V6 that they've got in the Evora that's living on into the Amira. I think it is. Yes. It will give you a top speed of 180 miles an hour, which is... Solidly fast. Which means that's actually going to be pretty reliable, too, since it's a Toyota V6. Mm -hmm. It will be. And it will go 0 to 60 in about 4.3 seconds. So That's quick, but not fast. No, it's not at all fast. Right. There's a difference there. Quick and fast. Yes. Punchy. Yeah. But it's not fast. And like we said, uh, it is kind of the middle ground for all of this stuff. Uh, The price will come in at a starting price of 77000 Oh. Which, honestly, it's okay. That's competitor to bad. the Cayman. That's competitor yeah. to like the TTRS. That's yeah, that's the competitor to them them lot. Is the Cayman performance about the same as this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I would say its biggest direct competitor is a seven one eight Cayman or a seven one eight Cayman S or something like that. So if you were given two options, a seven one eight Cayman and this, what would you take? Is it available in a manual? I I think it is. I think, think you is. can only get it in a manual with a three and a half liter V6, though. Um, I am going to say if you can get it in a manual, I would get the Emira, Emira. If you can not get it in a manual, then I would go for the Cayman. I can't find anything about it. On that, I so thought sure. you could, but I'm not sure. Okay. So that's my, my, my call is if I can get an Emira or an Emira, or however the hell you say it, in a manual transmission, that would be my pick because I think it looks a little bit better than the Cayman, to mm-hmm. be honest with you. Mm-hmm. Um, but if I can't get it in a manual, then I want just the pure driving fun of the, the Cayman with a manual. Uh, if I were put in the same spot, I think I would choose this because it would turn more heads and it would start more conversations. Oh, wait, we definitely People would. see Caymans. They do. Yeah. And that's like, just, it's a especially where we're at. That's just yeah. a run of the mill car. Right. Almost um, as common as a beige Lexus. <laughs> <laughs> But this would turn heads. You would show up to the car show and people would be like, oh, wow. That's, yeah, no, that's be, cool. Honestly, that has more presence. That has a lot more, more presence. I genuinely really like the look of the Emira. I do too. It's a lot lower and wider, mm-hmm. which if you're designing a car, like if you're someone that's graduating university with a degree in car design, like page one, chapter one is low and wide. That's how a car should be designed. Yeah, especially a sports car. 
which yeah. is the category that we're talking about here. It, yeah. it would be fun on a track. It wouldn't kill you on a racetrack. You could bring it, and it would also be a great car to go on the Friday night date. Like, Yeah, it'd be a great car to rip through the mountains. It'd be a great car. It's just a sports car. Yeah, I don't see too many problems with this car other than maybe after a lot of time of use with it, you'd think it's slow. Yeah, that right. probably happen. It would be the same situation as the BRZ. After six to nine months of it, I'm like, okay, it's it's slow. Did you ever think that it wasn't slow? When I first got it and I went from a 100 horsepower Honda Civic to a 200 horsepower BRZ, yeah, I thought it was fast as shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I guess your frame of reference going from a a Civic with 100 horsepower to a BRZ with 200, that is earth-shattering You speed. doubled the horsepower of your car. I am speed. Yeah. <laughs> but then you drive anything else. Like, I drove the Veloster N the other day. I was like, oh, God, my BRZ is slow. It's the slowest thing <laughs> in the known good. world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's all about your frame of reference. It is all about your frame of reference. And I will say it is still more fun to drive than that Veloster. So. Okay, that's fair. Yeah. That's it fair. feels more like a race car to drive. That's fair. I really like your pick of the Lotus. Yes. Uh, I I would actually I'm I would definitely get the Lotus over the seven when it came in. Okay. The more I think about it, the more I just really like this car. Yeah. No. I'd Especially say. in that blue, the, the that launch color blue they've right. got. The only worry that I would have is reliability. Well, it's Toyota. Yeah. If you get a three and a half liter V six, but it's also Lotus. Yeah, but it's Toyota. <laughs> <laughs> the engine's Toyota, and then the rest of the bits are well, correct. Lotus. Me okay. So you could have this for a year. You could have the Lotus for a year, <laughs> or you could have the Porsche for three. Uh, give me the Porsche for three. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there's that. I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let, let's get back to what you are gonna pick, because I imagine it's it's a Porsche of some sort. It is. Yeah, yes. Of course it is. It is the bestest Porsche that is out right now. It is the new nine nine two nine eleven GT three. There's a lot of nines. In oh, the thing. it's so good. Especially in that launch color that's called Shark Blue. Of course Ooh. it is. And you know it. I do know it very well, yes. And actually, the picture has got Shark Blue outer lip of the wheel painted yeah. in Shark Blue. And the headlight bezel ring is also painted in Shark Blue. Wow. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good with its swan neck wing. It is just the business. That is, in my opinion, the ultimate sports car of 2021. And you kind of cannot disagree with that. Mm, no, I won't disagree with it. It is beautiful looking. It's, it's the top of the line, fastest, hottest thing that they've made. It's not actually the fastest. Really? Turbo S is faster. But? The Turbo S is the hardest launching car that's like ever been created. Okay. Right. Yes. This is the most pure. Okay. Four liter, naturally aspirated flat six, available with three pedals. Perfect. Um, you are looking at a base price of 163 grand and change. Jeez. Well, I mean, if you think about it, in that upper echelon of sports cars, that's kind of standard now. Is it worth two Lotuses? Yes. Really? Yes. I don't even have to think about that. I would literally get this over two. I would get this over a Lotus and a Cayman. Okay. Both. I love. I'm in love with this car. I'm smitten with this car. <laughs> I've now seen a couple in person. I want to do many things to this car. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> I want to fondle this car. Well, either way, you've got that natural aspirated flat six. It revs to almost nine thousand RPM. So it's a screamer. Yeah. It develops 502 horsepower, which actually is a bunch of bullshit. Porsche, what they do, Porsche is really cool with this. They actually understate their power numbers. So they'll tell everyone that the car's got 502 horsepower. And then people are getting their stock GT3s on a dyno. Yeah. And they're pumping out like 520. Like they're understating them by a lot. It's actually pretty funny. So you're 500 plus or minus horsepower, probably a little over 500 horsepower. 346 pound feet of torque so it's not the torquiest but it's a naturally flat, flat, flat six it's just the business well quick question though yeah you're paying how much you're paying 100 and call it you know what screw the base price you're paying at least 170 grand okay 170 grand and you're getting 520 horsepower yeah this is a this is a field car okay. this is not a car this is not a car that you're trying to set zero to 60 time records in okay 
This is just the ultimate experience car. Because the Lotus is half the price and 400 horsepower. It's like almost, it's not almost the same horsepower. Yes, but you're but zero to there. 60 in 3.3 seconds if you've got the PDK, which shifts in a half a second. If you've got a manual, you're zero to 60 in like 3.8, 3.9 seconds. Mm -hmm. That's just because you have to account for the human leg, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So it's quick. It's quick it's okay. to 60. So they're just not making it the, the dumb fastest car. They probably could. They could around probably put a track, a horsepower on. Around a track, it is faster than everything else they've got. Hmm, okay. But in a straight line, it's not. Okay. This car can take corners like it's no one's business. It's got suspension right out of their RSR race car in the front. Right. Which is something they have not done before. They've just taken pretty much standard street shocks and struts out of any other street car and put them in their prior GT3s. This GT3 has got proper race suspension, proper double wishbone front suspension out of the RSR race car that we see around Daytona right. and Sebring. Like it's got a proper setup. Okay. Um, it is my favorite car of 2021, I think, actually. Like, genuinely, all categories combined. Yeah. But wasn't it always going to be? Like, here's Porsche's top model. You, there's no way. Well, you, you could have gone for the Turbo S, though, right? People people are oftentimes a Turbo S fan because it's just crazy fast in a straight line, but I'd rather have a GT3. Okay, sorry. Here's Porsche's second model. <laughs> what the? Well, I, honestly, there was a lot of cool cars that had come out, right? Yeah. But the GT3 is top in my list. Honestly, give me that and the Dodge Ram TRX as a two-car solution. The Dodge Ram TRX. <laughs> they would go beautifully together. Which one's Actually, the mommy missile? I, oh, the TRX for sure. Okay. I'll have my wife and our future kids load up into a jacked-up truck, and I'll ha watch her actually peel out as she leaves mm -hmm. dropping the kids off at school. Mm -hmm. Okay. But yes, my favorite sports car of 2021 is the 992 GT3. I can't argue it other than the, the <clears throat> price to power ratio. That seems a little off to me. But again, it's not the power. It, this is a car that you're not looking at horsepower numbers. Yes, horsepower numbers are relevant, but that's not the whole point of this car. As long as it doesn't have BRZ syndrome, where you're nine months into it and you're like, eh, it's kind of slow. Yeah, I genuinely don't think this has got BRZ syndrome because of how fast it can take a corner. Yeah, okay. Like, that's the whole point of this car is corners. This okay. car is not point and shoot. This car is, let's go get through some corners. Like, if you live in North Carolina, in Tennessee, in Colorado, in California, somewhere with mountain roads, this is right. the ultimate canyon carving car. I, I just wish it was, like, 700 horsepower. That's all I said. That's oh, that'd be great, but that be also would be, that's, that's going to be more for the GT3 RS that's going to come out, I'm sure. Okay. All right, so that wraps up sports cars. I had the Lotus, Amira, you had the 992 GT3. Yep. Uh, and now we shall move on to my favorite category, what? the best EV. Oh, my God. Yes. So let's start with you. What was your favorite EV? And no. I'm kind of surprised that you actually have one. <laughs> I didn't until I finally remembered that there was one that I don't like it as an EV, but I like it as a car. Uh, <clears throat> okay, what might that be? It is a Porsche. Mm, of course it is. Yeah, you saw that coming. Yeah. But it's not just a Porsche. It's the Porsche Taycan GTS Cross Turismo, or Sport Turismo, I should say. Pardon my language. There is the GTS Sport Turismo. Not just a standard GTS, but the Taycan GTS Sport Turismo. So I have seen a lot of Taycans around town, and mm -hmm. I do like the look of them. They're, mm -hmm. they're pretty cool looking. Um, this is the big hatchback one though right the, so the they big... currently have a, a big hatchback called the sport turismo which is up higher think of it as you know the audi all road it's the so. audi all road is a a bit of a lifted it's on bigger beefier tires to take more off-road stuff yes so like if you're going to a trailhead to go hiking okay right think of it like a subaru outback okay right they currently have a subaru outback Taycan. Okay. That's what they, that, the that's sport what this is. is. Yeah. yeah. This is not the Subaru Outback. Oh, okay. This is the Audi RS6 of our E63 version. Gotcha. So it's a wagon that is stupid fast that looks strikingly good. It's lowered and not lifted like the Sport Turismo. Mm -hmm. The Cross Turismo is lowered, beefier. Yeah, it just looks the business. It does look cool. I have not seen one of these in person. Have they, I don't person? think they've been delivered yet. Oh, okay. This is in and out like a released. Gotcha. I've seen a bunch of Taycans, but not this one. I've seen the Sport Turismo, the, the Subaru Outback version. Yeah. But I haven't seen the GTS. Gotcha. So this is a full EV, and this does come from your favorite brand. Do you have any numbers on it? No. 
Okay. I literally don't have any numbers on it at all. <laughs> like, uh, the, let me give you a little, like, I had to Google this. Mm-hmm. I didn't know any of this off the top of my head. So the the information I do have is the fact that it's $134,000 base price. Oh, my gosh. Um, okay. I mean, it looks good. Okay. It is 3.1 seconds, 0 to 60, so it's not the fastest, but I don't 3. really 1, care. 3.1, 0 to 60? Yeah. I mean, it's heavier, so that would make sense. And Dude. this is all estimated because I guess it's not really being delivered yet. Oh, um, right, right, because this spec. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I, I don't know how accurate this is, but 590 horsepower, maybe? I don't oh, that know. That sounds about right. What yeah. was the range on it? Yes. Okay. I'm seeing the no- the normal base one would be... Range, around, 230 miles. Yeah, around 212 to 220. Okay. So 230 miles is, in our book, kind of low. The Taycan has always been low. Yeah. We knew that going in. Right. It's Porsche trying to sort out how to do this well they also weren't going to it for range they were going to it for like can we make an ev feel like a sports car yes that's why porsche designed the Taycan. not like hey let's get 500 miles of range like let's see if we can make a daily ev that kind of feels and can corner like a sports car they said this ev thing's coming we need to figure this out kind of yes and we don't want to do it on the 911 yet unfortunately or, or the cayman or the boxer or any other <laughs> car in their lineup. Yeah. Yeah. So I like this car. I do wish it had more range and the price is really high. I literally don't know anything other than those couple of things. And the fact that I had to Google those, the only thing I knew about this car was that I really liked its ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's literally the only reason I picked this car. I was like, wow, that's a really good looking behind and moving oh. on. So would you like to hear my favorite EV? Of this year? No. Well, you're gonna. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's an EV, Derek. All right. Okay. So I think you've spotted one of these around town. It is the Mercedes-Benz EQS. I have spotted one. I've seen it with my two eyes. Oh, is it like going the other way? I, it was. It was actually driving. It wasn't just like stopped. It was like actually driving. Okay. So I have a photo up here of actually the interior of the EQS because that's kind of what I want to talk about. The interior, the exterior, it looks like... a kind of mercedes-ish it's not really it looks like a mercedes sedan yeah Uh, but the interior is where things get way different uh this is mercedes's swing at what a car is supposed to be in 2030 from the interior this looks like the i don't know millennium falcon yeah you're in a spaceship you're in the next like generational leap of technology you have but that's what mercedes has always done Mercedes has always put the stuff that we're going to find in like mm-hmm. the standard Civic in mm-hmm. 20 years in their top of the range model. That is That's what just they like do. what they do is like if you historically look back at like, OK, the tech that you find in like a Corolla nowadays, right. like the lane departure, the radar guided cruise control, all that kind of stuff. That was like originally introduced in a Mercedes S class in like the 90s. Mm-hmm. And now we're catching up to it 20 plus years later. Right. Right. So. Apparently, this is what every one of our cars is going to look like in 25 years. Yeah. Your Corolla in 2040 will have all this tech in it. It's going to have three different displays. It's going to have a Siri for every single person, like a dedicated Siri for every single person, which is kind of interesting. It's, I think it's pretty neat. It's got like crazy halo LED stuff everywhere. It's supposed to be super, super comfortable, super luxurious. It's Mercedes though. Uh, But it does start at (laughs) $100,000. EVs are not particularly cheap. No. Uh, it will get you 340 miles of range. Not bad. Like, way better than sure. the Porsche. Oh, it's way better. It looks yeah. way uglier than the Porsche. Mm, I think the interior looks cooler. But, no. That's just... This car wasn't meant to be the end-all, be-all for Mercedes. This is how far can we push things. Let's figure it out. Uh, comes in with 329 horsepower. It goes from 320 to 500 horsepower, I guess, based on the spec. Um, that's not a lot of horsepower for that car. It's not a lot for that car. I don't have a zero to 60 time, but I don't think it would be particularly not fast. because it's going to weigh a gazillion pounds. Mm, almost 6,000 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> it's like 5.8. <laughs> that's a set with people. That's a 6,000 pound car. That is a 6,000 pound car. Yes. That's heavy. That's very heavy. <laughs> that with people is not a whole hell of a lot more less than the Dodge Ram TRX. But you know what that does is does shock me that they're still getting 340 miles of range out of a 5,000 pound car. How big is their battery? Uh, I don't have the kilowatt hours. Up. Three million kilowatts. It's got to be big. It's got to be a big. It's got to be huge. Yeah, uh, but I think that this is a cool car because it shows us what cars in the future are going to be, and they're going to be that. 
like whether you like it or not. Uh, so I'm I'm looking at this picture that we were looking at. Mm -hmm. I can already tell you that their side view mirrors are horribly set. Yeah, yeah, you can see the, the edge <laughs> of the car. Yeah, I just I'm looking at this and automatically that's where my brain goes. <laughs> I think that if um, in the future the once we have all the self driving sorted out, they'll remove the side view mirrors, and I think that that will increase like the range by like twenty percent on all cars. It's something pretty crazy. Is it really that much? Yeah, it's something pretty crazy. Like you can make the aerodynamics of a car a lot better just by removing the mirrors. Those are going to look really weird. They are going to look really weird, yeah. I mean, all the cars will look like computer-generated, aerodynamic kind of <laughs> planned. I would hate to be a, <laughs> someone that's going to school for car design right now. Because they're yeah. literally taking all of the soul and passion out of right. designing cars. Like, could you imagine going to some, I don't know, car design school of Italy back in 1972, oh. right? Where... You're graduating and you're designing these beautiful lines yep. on a Lamborghini Miro or you're, you know, you're crafting some uh, just, edgy, uh, you know, an alpha, just something. And now you're just like, OK, let me plug this into some CAD and let's <laughs> see if it is kind of slippery or not. Right. What is the most aerodynamically efficient and line just, that I can draw in this car? Yeah. We're moving that way. It's, it just is what it is. Maybe there will be a point where like batteries become so efficient that like there's no need to have 2000 miles of range and you just start to build cars that are wild again give me an old cadillac yeah uh, maybe we'll eventually see that inflection point where design won't be as aerodynamic and efficiency won't matter as much but we're not there yet yeah we're not there yet you're right we are not there yet and thank god we are not there yet <laughs> because i don't want to ever be there frankly because it just seems kind of miserable in my opinion it's coming yeah. so uh i think that, that wraps up our our little extravaganza for our favorite cars of 2021 yep uh, 2022 should have many good cars as well mm -hmm. but let's move on to the car spot of the week do you have any car spots i do okay. i do i so i did see something that i i don't i didn't you know get any pictures or links of but there is a maroon bentley continental gt okay so it was the newest body style Bentley Continental. Mm -hmm. What is your opinion on a Bentley Continental? Um, wow, I, I I like them because I've seen race car versions of them, right? Mm -hmm. And it, it's like an elephant going down a racetrack. Yes, it is. <laughs> but at the same time, that's kind of awesome. It kind of is, yeah. A Continental GT, it's mixed. Like you're trying to get the luxury, but you're trying to get some speed in there. It's well, but why? Like because it's Bentley. It's just what Bentley does. It's like historically Bentley is just like okay, let's cram a million horsepower into something that is the most comfortable thing in the world. But you're trying to be the best of two completely different things. Completely different. No. You're trying to be the best Grand Tour. Mm. Where you have yeah. unlimited amount of power. And you have unlimited amount of comfort. Mm. I will tell you the new body style Bentley Continental, I really like the look of. I do too. I thought the previous body style was kind of bland, just yep. like blah ish, like unsalted rice. Right. The but the new one, it actually looks pretty striking. And the color I saw it was this deep maroon mm -hmm. with and it had like their black trim package. So it was maroon with like the you know the black grill, black wheels with like the the black headlight bezels. It looked kind of menacing and really good. Yeah, like it was a really classy spec. Um, they are. I'm a big fan of a Bentley Continental. I just the new ones. I just think they're like. I would love a Bentley Continental GT to just like crush continents. Like just to drive around, literally, like really I would, far distances. Yes, yeah. Like if I was taking this on a trip from Florida to Washington State across right. America, this would be the most comfortable car to do it. Yeah, it'd be fantastic. Because you also have, uh, I believe the one I saw was the V8 version. So okay. you're the the smaller of the two engines, a four liter V8, developing 542 horsepower. Now I believe they are going to be making it in the w12 a six liter yeah. w12 yeah. which is going to be doing 650 horsepower they've done those w12s for a while now mm -hmm. <laughs> those are wild but they're they're cool they're just like mechanics nightmare 
Oh, I could <laughs> never imagine wrenching <laughs> on one of those. That's just insane. But yeah, I'm a big fan of them. I just, I saw that and I was like, that's just a really classy spec. Yeah. I could see myself going on a road trip with this. Right. So oh, that's cool. That's one spec. Now, the next spec that I saw was, this is a little weird. It's very different. It is a Ferrari 488 GTB, which I've spotted before. And we've talked about 488s. Mm-hmm. But this was a different 488. Uh, okay. This was a 70th anniversary edition 488. Oh? Celebrating Ferrari's 70th anniversary. Hmm. So it had special badging. It had a special uh, red two-tone silver paint. Mm-hmm. It was kind of cool. And I saw it and I was like, that's not just like a regular old 488. There's right. something a little more to it. There's more to this 488 than just a regular 488. It is a 488 GTB 70th anniversary edition. Huh. That, that I can see what you're talking about here. We have mm-hmm. it pulled up. Um, and it is pretty cool what this car looks like. It does have the unique badging. It's got the silver where normally I think black would be. Yep. Um, and are those different rims as well or are those stock rims? I believe it does have different wheels on it. Yep. Okay. It's a cool thing. And do you know happen to know how many of those were made? You know what? Let me do a quick Google. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but it because was really, really cool. If it is one of those really limited edition runs, um, that's what's going to end up setting those to be super rare and i i hope that it's really rare because when these cars are built with like a hundred of them or something like that it's always awesome to see one how many were made 350 total yeah that's perfect yeah so it's pretty low numbers Mm -hmm. Uh, i think it's awesome when car companies do that kind of thing we just saw that with uh, a couple different car companies Mm -hmm. right yeah so when i saw this i was like that's not just a regular 488 no so i just now i'm realizing i saw a one of 350 worldwide yeah no that's really cool yeah that's my spot of the week because it is ultra rare i would Mm -hmm. say and just cool because you just don't expect and this is one of those things where being a car enthusiast and kind of a car spotter comes in handy Mm -hmm. because everyone else is going to look at that be like wow it's a red ferrari what do you expect like but then when you look a little deeper you see the special 70th anniversary badging. You see the extra little silver trim pieces that they normally have painted black. Just a really cool, unique little mm-hmm. little spot. Mm-hmm. So that's my spot of the week. 70th anniversary 488 GTB. Nice, nice. So you want to hear what I saw around town? I do. Yes. What would you see? Cool. I saw, uh, to kick it off, I saw there was a black Lamborghini Huracan, which nothing too crazy. Yep, it did have those. black rims and then green brake calipers. And I was like, hmm. The green really does accent well on that. Do you like green brake bright calipers? Uh, in certain situations, yes. Okay. I think green and blue work on the black on black. Yeah. Right? Uh, red red can work on the black on black. Red is kind of standard. Yeah. It's, yeah. Um, gold also works really well in black on black. Yeah. Yep. Gold is good on most. Mm-hmm. Um, but a Huracan is kind of just your run-of-the-mill car around here right now. Sorry. Yeah, we it's, see a lot of Huracans. Yeah, that's nothing super special. But I did see something really, really, really cool. What's that? So I was driving over to, I think we were going to dinner with some friends, uh, and we were way out, uh, way up north and way out east, we were, uh, and we were coming to dinner, and I saw a, what I believe was a red, and it said TVR in the front of it, and I was like, wait a minute, what? You saw a TVR? Yeah. Whoa. It was really cool. That's wild. So you right don't after ever I saw see it, TVRs here. it was going the other way. So I got a quick flash of it. Mm-hmm. Um, and right after I saw it, I did some Googling because I'm like, I got to figure out which one this is because that is my car spot. No, 100% that's my car spot. For sure. Um, and from what I can tell, it is an M series TVR. And okay. I believe that it is a 2500 M. Hmm. Mind you, I don't know too much about TVRs, but from what I well, can remember. I'll be honest. No one on this side of the pond really no. would because no. they really weren't hardly ever even from what i can tell this is the car that i spotted or very similar to it um and it was very very cool to see it was definitely an elderly gentleman driving around kind of towards sunset uh yeah little sunset cruise yep and he's just taking it out kind of way out in the middle of nowhere let's go which is awesome um but i do have some numbers on the tbr okay so top speed 109 miles an hour baby let's go we are (laughs) flying it gives you 106 brake horsepower wait stop stop how many 106 (laughs) that's not very fast eric no 
No, not at all. No. But I believe that this was built, uh, I'm trying to figure out when exactly it was built. It was built way back. Um, it will have a top speed of, <laughs> or it'll go zero to 60 with that 100 miles an hour, or with that 100 horsepower <laughs> in 9.3 seconds. Let's go. Man, we are moving. 9.3. So that is so slow. That is unbelievably slow. That is like less than a car that's greater than a corolla mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like the the corolla that we would use in like a driving school i think could smoke that right to 60 so these were built between 1972 to 74 uh so i mean like 100 horsepower back then is not it's still not a lot but <laughs> it's not terrible it's, yeah back then 100 horsepower was kind of average i think for right. a sports car it was reasonable um and it'll get you up to 109 miles an hour you do have a 2.5 liter normally aspirated straight six mm. and you have a twin zenith carburetors let's Man. go we got good old carburetors some carbs we don't even have fuel injection at that point yes <laughs> and it does yes. have a peak torque of 133 pounds or foot pounds of torque and the peak torque is at 3000 rpm while the peak power is at 5000 rpm yeah, how weird is that? That's a really weird like torque curve there. That's like, that's mm-hmm. odd. And it will give you a four-speed manual with an optional overdrive. <laughs> overdrive. <laughs> is that just fifth gear? I guess like I don't really know how overdrive works. I don't understand overdrive very well. Okay, we'll have to do some research on that one. I suppose we will. From what I can tell, there were just under a thousand of them built. That specific. So that's actually model. pretty rare. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually pretty rare. That's kind of cool to see that. It was very cool to see the TVR. That's awesome. Yeah. That is freaking cool. That's a good spot, dude. That was a fantastic spot. I was Dang. stoked about that when I saw it, and I was also stoked to do some Googling and figure out it is one of the slowest cars ever. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's always one of the cool things. Is you see something, and you're like, I have to Google this. I uh-huh. have to figure out what the hell did I just see? And then you finally stumble upon it. It's like, that's it. I found it. Mm-hmm. Ah. Yep. The no, good old cool. days of being a car spotter. So we are starting to run long. Uh, yep. We need to do the I wish they would have. Yes, we do. Do you have anything? I do. All right. So you made mention of this, mm-hmm. but it is a real life use case for people that are vertically challenged as I am. <laughs> <laughs> so those of you that know me know I'm like a whopping five, six on a really good day. Mm-hmm. So something that I struggle with is my sun visor because I'm just short enough to where oftentimes the sun visor, when it flips down, doesn't quite reach. (laughs) So I wish they would make (laughs) sun visors for short, short people, meaning like an extender on your sun visor, something. I wish they would do bigger sun visors for shorter people. That seems like a good idea. It seems like a very solvable problem. As well. Yes, because I can't tell you how many times this happens to me. Can you not just buy one of those on Amazon? I don't a know. I've never extender. actually looked, <laughs> to be honest, because I've just dealt with it thinking this is just how the way the world is to I mean, short people. It has to exist. It has to. I think it does. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. It is a good one, though. Like it, the, st- the car should come stock with something that a reasonably short person could use. <laughs> reasonably short person yes. you're you're a reasonably short person you're not like yes. really short you're right you're not in the four foot territory correct yeah yes i'm five six which means oftentimes when i'm driving the sun visor doesn't really do anything right because it's just not quite large enough to flip down yeah. and block enough sun and at like five ten or five eleven where i'm at it works there's no problem like ever yeah it's like a couple inches makes a huge difference no oh, massive yeah so sometimes i'm driving and i'm like I'll like scoop myself up in my seat <laughs> just so that I can like be in the line of the sun visor. Do you need a booster? <laughs> Maybe. No. All right. Do you have an I wish they would have? I do. I do. Okay. What you got? So I was over at uh, a buddy's place and they actually sell electric bikes, which was really, really cool. And he was building a new facility that they have and they're over by the airport. Okay. And he put in, uh, he put in little lights in the sidewalk. And they actually had solar panels in them, and they were LED lights. Uh, and they were very cool. At night, they would turn on, and they would end up like lighting up this little walkway that they had. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, that's super, super cool. Where'd you get those? And he, he was telling me that he found the people who make runway lights for airports, and they make little lights that you can huh. put on sidewalks that have solar panels in them, that's and they really can cool. light up the sidewalk. So I was thinking, why can't you just put those on the road? 
And why can't we use those as lane line markers? It's a good idea. Yeah. Why can't we have solar panel lane line markers that have LEDs in them so that when it's nighttime, they, I mean, have you seen a runway at night? Oh, it's lit it's up like so, the 4th of July. It's so perfect. Yeah. It's amazing. Would that not be too distracting for drivers though? Uh, I would, I don't know. I don't know. Because they have the reflectors already in the lane line markers, right? Mm -hmm. And those reflect your headlights back at you. Mm -hmm. So there's already some sort of like brighter than normal light coming back at people. I don't know if an LED would make it any different. Or would it be too bright? I don't. Well, you could tune it back. Yeah. Right? You, you, could, you could tune LEDs with whatever you want. Um, but True. I think that'd be a great idea to put those in. What, what I have a problem with, what I think would happen, is you would get like buildup of dirt and debris and skid marks and tire marks on top of the solar panel. Yeah. And then you wouldn't get any energy in there, and then you'd have problems. And then you would just be going back to a reflector. Right. right. <laughs> but the reflector suffers the same fate. Like, yeah. If the reflector is all dirty and beat up, it won't reflect light. It needs that true that reflection surface to reflect light off of. So True. But I don't know. I, I think it's a solvable problem, but one that definitely needs some testing. I do like the I wish they would have you got, though. Yeah. Yeah. So put an LED solar panel little light on the lane lines as the reflectors. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, I can dig it. Yeah. All right. So I guess, is that it for you? That is it. All right. So that's going to wrap us up for episode 44. Thank you all so much for watching and listening. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, please make sure you hit that subscribe button and drop a comment and a thumbs up for us. If you're listening audio only, whether that be Spotify, Apple, or however, especially if you're on Apple, we'd be so grateful if you leave us a five-star rating and drop a comment or a review on Apple as well. Also, make sure you connect with us on social. Facebook is We Are Auto. Instagram is We Are Auto, Insta uh, we are auto underscore. Uh, TikTok is We Are Auto. And uh, also, send us your I wish they would have, right? Any of those weird things that you've thought about, you're like, oh, yeah, I wish they would do this or whatever auto-related news articles, send them over and we'll uh, potentially chat about them. So that, again, that's going to wrap us up for episode 44. Thank you so much for watching and listening and we'll catch you guys in the next one. Happy New Year's. Peace.